Hi friends. I'm Miss Herring. I'm a teacher librarian in Mount Diablo Unified School District. And today I'm going to read to you a special story called The Story of Baudry. And the story of Baudry takes place during World War II, which was about 80 years ago. And um, it was a very scary time in our country, but um, a lot of people came together to help people and there was a lot of compassion um, to help people survive and to get through this really, really hard time. So today I'm gonna tell a story um, and this story was written by a woman named Heidi Fried and she is a survivor of World War II. Um, she's still alive, she's 98 years old. Um, she was a very young girl at the time of the war and she is, um, she, she's, this is a true story based on a true story. And so let's, let's hear about the story of Baudry today. Baudry was my best friend. His coat was soft and brown. My little sister thought Baudry belonged to her. Mother said he belonged to all of us. But Baudry and I knew that most of all, he was mine. And then we have an illustration here of the whole family and Baudry. Baudry was our guard dog. I slept well at night because I knew Baudry was watching over our family and our little town. And then this picture here has a very, very tiny house and then some beautiful imagery of the night sky. And this looks like a harvest moon or a blood moon. Maybe you've seen those from time to time. My friend Marika lived on the other side of the fence. We shared a, lots of secrets and we had so much fun together. We both loved dogs and whipped cream and climbing right up to the top of the walnut tree. I loved playing with Marika and Baudry loved playing with Marika's dog, Bandy. We knew all the best hiding places, where to find the juiciest plums and that we had to watch out for the big dog on the other side of the street. So, there we have Baudry and Marika and Bandy. And then on this side, we have a beautiful tree. And then there's that big scary dog. Marika and I were almost the same height and we were both really good at whistling. She ran faster than I did, but I was better at reading. If we ever argued, we made up almost right away. Looking at us, we were very much alike. We both had scabby knees and new front teeth. The only difference between us was that we said different prayers. Marika went to church and I went to synagogue. I was Jewish, Marika wasn't. Okay, we've got this beautiful picture of them outside playing, climbing the tree. The dogs are playing down here. This looks like a nice day, right? Um, and the narrator talks about being different religions. And so there is a religion called Judaism, if you're not familiar. And part of World War II was people thinking that there was something scary or dangerous about people who were Jewish and um, there was an evil man who wanted to get rid of people who were Jewish and so it was a really scary time and so she's talking about this and she's sharing that she and her best friend the only thing that was really different about them was that they went to different churches they had different religions Okay. One day I heard a man's voice shouting on our radio in a foreign language. His name was Adolf Hitler. Mother said, he won't come here. Father said, we haven't done anything wrong. We don't need to be afraid. 
okay and then this illustration shows so this is the radio and she's imagining like um, Adolf Hitler and this is what he looked like um, he's very famous because he had a specific kind of mustache and so um, people can usually recognize him when they see him because he was a very very bad man but he was very powerful for a short amount of time war broke out and soldiers came to our town the soldiers took orders from hitler and we took orders from the soldiers i was no longer allowed to play outside i was no longer allowed to go out with baudry i was no longer allowed to play with marika hitler hated me even though he didn't know me he hated me and my family because we were jewish it didn't make any sense So her world is changing, right? She's lost her ability to hang out with her best friend and there are scary soldiers in her neighborhood and she's afraid. And I think that I would be afraid too. If, if somebody wanted me just to go away because I was a little bit different than them, that would be very scary. And it was a very scary time. Marika and I still played together anyway, since we could crawl through a hole in the fence. We played under her cherry tree or under our plum tree. One day, even though we weren't allowed, we snuck out to the park. Our lovely park with all the climbing trees and hiding places. For a little while, th things felt normal again. But then we saw a sign, a big shiny sign on our bench the bench where we'd sat so many times, Marika, Baudry, Bandy, and I. Verjuden, verboten. No Jews allowed. So sometimes we have big changes in our world and we get a little glimpse of something that feels familiar. And for her, it was playing in their park until you see this very shocking sign that says that this little girl is not welcome to sit on this bench just because of the religion that she and her family practices. After that, we didn't dare to play outside anymore. We had to stay indoors. The grown-ups said that things would get better soon. It was only a matter of time, but things didn't get better. One day, Hitler decided that we Jewish people were no longer allowed to live in our homes. Then where are we going to live? I asked mother. She didn't know. Father's hands trembled as he packed our bags. Mother was pale. It had never occurred to me that mothers and fathers could be afraid. Now I knew that we were in danger. Okay, so here's a picture of the family. And then they're packing up. So they're learning that they're no longer allowed to live in their own home. And they have to pack up everything they have and go somewhere else. And they don't even know where they're going. And maybe you have, have seen a moment where your grownups were scared. Um, and it's scary when they're scared, right? Uh, it makes things much more real when the grownups get scared. The soldiers rounded us up. They rounded up my family and all the other Jews. Hitler's soldiers scared us with their weapons and their blank stares. Okay, let's take a look at this picture. So this is another picture of Hitler. And he was a very angry man. And so when his soldiers are gathering people it's a very scary thing because you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what's where you're going. We passed through the park where Baudry, Bondi, Marika, and I used to play. Past the bench with its shiny new sign. Past our climbing trees and our hiding places. Suddenly, I felt a rough tongue licking my hand. Baudry had been following us, wanting to come along. But the soldiers kicked him and struck out at him and he ran away to avoid more beatings. He cautiously crept along behind us, all the way to the station where my family and I 
were put onto a train. So if you have a pet, you know how much they love to follow you, right? And especially dogs are very loyal to their family. And so of course, Baudry thought, oh, we're going somewhere. I might as well just go with my family. Um, but then they ended up getting put onto a train, which you can see down here. And they were most likely packed very, very closely into that train. And they would not let a dog on that train. The train pulled out and Baudry ran after it as far as he could. Other abandoned dogs gathered around him. I waved and waved and waved until my Baudry was out of sight. I thought about him every day and every night, about how he was getting along without me. I imagined him and his new dog friends sleeping in the woods, searching for food when they were hungry, helping each other. I imagined him going to Bondi's house and yapping outside the door. Perhaps Marika would see him through the window and know that he was hungry. Maybe she would sneak out with some bones and pat his soft fur. I imagined Baudry rushing back to his dog friends to share. The grown-ups disappeared. We were cold and frightened. We were hungry and thirsty. My sister and I almost died in that camp they took us to. Hitler's prison guards shaved our heads and took our clothes. We had to wear dirty uniforms and hard shoes. Thinking about Baudry gave me strength. Dreaming about our old life made it possible for me to go on living. When I was hungry, I thought about Baudry. When I was tired, I thought about Baudry. When I missed mother and father, I thought about Baudry. Many days passed and many nights. So here is the train leaving and all of the animals who had families who loved them that had to get left behind are gathered together. And then this shows what the author and her sister were experiencing. And another thing about this time in history was the people who were put into these camps um, did not have a lot of food. They did not have safety. They did not have health care. It was a very scary time and lots and lots of people died. Baudry couldn't count the days and nights, but he watched the trees change into their snowy pajamas and then into their soft, lacy green skirts. Isn't that a cool way to describe different seasons? You know, where a tree is changing into the, the snowy pajamas and then into their soft, lacy green sh skirts in spring. I think that's a beautiful way to think about it. And even later, into long, dark green gowns. One day when the trees had already put on their copper-red autumn robes, Baudry heard someone calling his name. Baudry! Ba Baudry! He could hardly believe his ears, but when he turned around, it was really her. It was me. Baudry rushed over to me, jumping on me, twirling around me, licking me and hugging me and howling with joy. After a while, he settled down, looking at me with some tears in his eyes, seeing that I wanted to say something. That was when I told him the war was over. Adolf Hitler was dead. And then look at this picture. So she's running towards her dog. And here she is. She's skinny. She's bald. But she is just so happy to see her dog. And I think that's how all of us would be, right? If we got one, another chance with a dog or a pet that we've lost. I told him about all the evil Hitler had done before the war finally ended and that many, many people had been murdered. They were murdered even though they had done nothing. Nothing wrong, sorry. Just because Hitler had declared that they should die. But some people, including my little sister Olivia and I, survived. We are here, and we go on telling everyone about what happened so that it will never happen again. And then they show what she and her sister looked like when they came back from the camp. And then they show them now 
living their lives and telling people the stories of what happened to them and what happened to the people that they loved. So this is a tough story to read and I have a hard time reading it because thinking about life and how life must have been back then for so many children and so many adults is a hard thing to do and then thinking about losing something like your dog who you love the most in the world um it's hard but there are there are shining moments in this story right uh thinking about Baudry gave her hope when she was in her darkest place it gave her something to remember that was positive and then also to look forward to right when we have a really hard time or when we have a really difficult day sometimes it really helps us to think about something that we love and that we treasure and that's what what Heidi Fry did is that she spent time in one of the worst places ever and she thought about her dog. And so maybe if you're having a tough day at school, maybe if, you know, one of your grown-ups is sick, or maybe even if you are losing a pet, you can think of the happy times and the good things about your experience or, or um, just look forward to something. Um, and that helps us get through those really tough times, right? So I hope you liked this story. I hope it gave you some insight into something that maybe you didn't know a lot about. And it also reminded you that every day and everything is precious and we should really remember and cherish the things that we love. Until next time, I'm Miss Herring. See you later, friends. <laughs>